Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer, Principal Consultant and Trainer at Industrial Metallurgists. Um, I realized that I hadn't put, put together a video about what is metals engineering. I'm talking all the time about applying metals engineering to product design and manufacturing, but I realized I hadn't talked about it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is metals engineering. So metals engineering is the application of metallurgy to design and manufacturing decisions and problems involving metals. I'm going to turn off my video too. Um, it's going to be applied to component design. This means select, helping select materials to help reduce the cost of making components or thinking about materials that enable um, good reliability in the components. So that would be DFR, Design for Reliability. And also um, selecting materials that enable easy manufacturing or design for manufacturability. We want to make sure that components, because components that are difficult to manufacture will end up costing more to make. And finally, with component design, we want to think about the material specifications for the metals that are being used in a component. Then the next thing is helping with manufacturing process development to help develop processes that are capable of continually um, fabricating components and assemblies that continually meet their, their requirements. And this means setting up the manufacturing processes so that the things that are done to the materials result in materials that have the desired properties and, and, and shape as well. If they don't have the desired properties, then the materials won't work as desired in the components and in the joints between components and then within the product. Then there's also supplier evaluation. It's important to understand the capabilities of suppliers and evaluate their materials, not just rely upon their material test uh, um, um, reports or on just a, a demonstration of their, of their manufacturing line. It's important to evaluate samples from the supplier to make sure that they are capable of providing materials and components that continually meet your specifications for an application. And finally, there's solving component failures and quality issues. Things come up all the time. Components break in products, or there's manufacturing quality problems or supplier quality problems. And it's important to do, to do a failure analysis and then use the information from a failure analysis to, to determine the root cause of the problem to prevent it from reoccurring. Um, and without Understanding without applying metals engineering, then it's difficult to do to do uh, to perform failure analysis and evaluate quality issues. So metallurgy is is related is is the science of metals. It involves an understanding between the um, the properties of a metal and its composition and its microstructure. So composition refers to the main element in an alloy, whether it's iron and steel or aluminum and aluminum alloys and so on, and the alloying elements present in the alloy and any impurities that might be present. All those things affect the properties of a material. And then there's the microstructure. Microstructure refers to microscopic structures that are present within the metal. This includes grains and phases and dislocations in the arrangement of atoms within the metal and other things that are going on inside of the metal that we can't see with the naked eye that we need a microscope to see. These microscopic structures have a huge impact on the properties of a metal. And we can alter the microscopic structures within a metal and that will alter the properties of a metal. So understanding the, the effects of microstructure and composition on properties is one aspect of metallurgy. The other aspect is understanding the effects of manufacturing processes that can be mechanical treatment and or thermal treatment on the microstructure combined with the effects of the composition. So we can take the same material and process it in different ways and get different microstructures and get different properties. So metallurgy in, is the, uh, involves understanding the relationship between the properties of a metal and its composition and its microscopic and its microstructure and the effects of the manufacturing processes on the microstructure. When we understand all these things, then it's possible to uh, identify materials to use in components and identify manufacturing processes used to produce components or to make assemblies. Um, it's um, possible also to, to select the processes that are used on, on the materials um, in order to get the desired microstructure and desired properties. And then we also use this information to develop manufacturing processes. And then when there are problems, we use this understanding to help us understand the cause of the problem. 
And when I talk about properties, um, a lot of people might focus on mechanical properties such as strength, hardness, and ductility. But the different categories of properties are shown here. There's mechanical properties, electrical, fabrication, joining, reliability, cost, and physical properties. And for any particular application for a component within a product, we may be concerned with one, two, or, or three or four, or even or all of the different categories of properties here. What's especially important for people to pay attention to is the ease of fabrication, ease of joining. We want to make sure that when we're that we're, when we're selecting materials that we don't get materials that just uh, don't select materials that satisfy only the mechanical or electrical properties, but also that they make it easy for components to be fabricated and joined together. And then, of course, we want to have components that are reliable, so we have to think about properties with respect to corrosion, wear, fatigue, or creep. So there's a lot of things to consider when selecting a material for um, in order to optimize performance and reliability of a component at, at, at a reasonable cost. And to, so I look at any product as an assembly of materials. So if we look at, here's a bicycle, and this is a close-up of the, of the crank assembly of the bicycle, and you see all these different components. Well, all these different components are comprised of different materials that have been shaped and manipulated and modified in order to have specific properties. And in order to give the component certain, uh, certain uh, performance uh, help, help the component be able to meet certain performance requirements for the application as well as meet reliability requirements and also to meet hopefully the cost requirements to, to, to make that component. So if we look at each component as being a specific material that's been shaped and modified, then we can see a product as being an assembly of materials. And we have to select the materials, we have to shape them, that means using different fabrication processes to shape the materials into the desired shape. We have to test the materials to make sure that they can withstand the use conditions. We have to write material specifications to make sure that the suppliers of, 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 of materials and of components and of assemblies understand what the requirements are and what they have to do in order to meet the requirements. We have to select suppliers and make sure we select suppliers that are capable of continually providing materials, components, and assemblies that meet our requirements. Then we have to assemble the materials into a, pro into a product using processes that are developed um, to make sure that the materials are being modified or joined together in a way that results in reliable um, joints and a reliable product. And finally, we have to solve problems associated with the materials that are used in the product. So all this involves, there's a lot of things involving the materials. So it seems that metals engineering expertise will be helpful, at least occasionally, when, when dealing with product design and manufacturing and problems. So I have a couple examples of how metals engineering is applied to design and manufacturing and solving problems. The first is for a high strength bracket. Uh, it would be fabricated out of a quarter inch thick steel plate, maybe made out of 4140 steel. We wanna select a, a material and, a pro and processes that are capable of forming the component into the desired shape from, from steel plate and then getting the desired uh, strength. So one option is to use 4140 steel and order it in the spheroidized condition. In this condition, um, the material has the lowest strength and it has high ductility. And it's easy to bend without cracking. And the microstructure looks like this. And I won't bother I won't bore you with the details with this microstructure, but this is a typical, this can be a typical steel microstructure. And you can see the magnification here. So this is a, the microstructure consists of particles of cementite in a ferrite matrix. And again, this is the lowest strength, highest ductility form of a uh, way of ordering steel. This material is easy to bend without cracking. Then we can take the, 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 the part after it's been formed and heat treat it to strengthen it. This could involve an oil quench and followed by a temper or mar tempering. In either case, we'd want to select the process, either oil quench or mar tempering, in order to minimize distortion of the bracket. We don't want, don't want it to lose the bends in the bracket. So that's one, one uh, example of, of applying um, metallurgy to engineering the, the component, identifying the alloy and identifying how to, the, the condition in which to order it, and then identifying the heat treatment that's used after forming, forming the component. The second is 
preventing product test failures. So this was an, um, a product where it was using a, an aluminum shaft that was three quarters of an inches in diameter, about 18 inches long. And it was specified to be 6061 aluminum that was heat treated to a T6 temper. This involves a series of heat treatments in order to meet the minimum yield and tensile strength requirements for 6061 T6. So, I was working with the with uh, the, co the company making making the product that was using this the the um the shaft, and we got samples from the supplier before assembling the product test samples. So we're going to build product test samples and then test them to make sure that they can stand up to the use conditions. And luckily, we did this because we did uh, the composition analysis and found out that the, the material didn't meet the requirement, chemical, the composition requirements for 6061. We couldn't do tensile testing because we couldn't make a tensile test specimen out of the, out of the component because of, of its geometry. The met, we did, looked at the metallography or the microstructure of the material, and we saw well dispersed and numerous small particles. So there wasn't any, didn't look like there was any problem with the microstructure. But we also did hardness testing. Now for, for the alloy, Hardness is not a is, is not a um, is not a specification, but there are there is typical hardness, and we measure the hardness as being sixty five Brunel hardness, but the typical hardness for this material sixty sixty one T six is ninety five, so this indicated to us that the material had low strength, and we did some quick tests on the material and did indeed find that it was breaking it, it breaking its stresses lower than we expected, so there was something wrong with the heat treatment with the t6 heat treatment that resulted in the material having lower than expected strength and the benefit of doing this analysis prior to doing product testing is that first of all it didn't build product and then have it have to throw it away and didn't waste time conducting product tests only to have them not be um, be of any value because the components that were being used that was being used in it didn't have the right strength so the Problem was discussed with the supplier, and they quickly made new samples and provided samples, and they were tested, and they did meet the requirements, and they were then tested during product testing, and it was found that the product was able to pass the test once um, the the uh, the component had had the right strength. So that's an example of using uh, using metal uh, applying metals engineering or applying metallurgy to to first characterize the material and then understand what the root cause of the problem was with the material and get that problem fixed. So there are a lot of benefits of using metals engineering. First is reducing component costs through design for reliability and selecting materials that are less expensive to use. Reducing risks to design schedule, making sure that we can come up, up select materials that have good reliability and making sure the materials meet requirements so that when we do product testing, that products test pass tests the first time. There'll be fewer quality and reliability problems because the materials will be um, uh, when selected for good reliability and also selecting materials that are able to um, easily fabricate components out of those materials. Also more innovation as we're engineering the materials rather than focusing only on engineering the mechanical form of components, identifying capable suppliers, quickly fi fixing product failures and quality problems. So the, the, the net effect is that people can be more productive, there are fewer surprises, and there's less stress when designing products and when manufacturing them and when dealing with problems. So the next steps for those of you who aren't metallurgists or don't have metallurgists on staff, perhaps learn metallurgy, take a course, take one of our courses or attend one of our webinars, hire or retain a metallurgist that can help you out to help you um, design products and design manufacturing processes, work with suppliers, and help with, with failure analysis and fixing quality problems. And I also offer that help to companies. And then finally, develop a budget for routine analysis and failure analysis so that when problems do occur, that it, it's not a shock to, this, to the corporate system that there's money already set aside for doing the analyses and the testing. So that there's there's so that people aren't reluctant to go forward with doing your tests. Um, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, 
feel free to email me or to call and or you can go to our, our web my website uh, www.imetllc.com for more information about all the services we offer and also the free articles and other things thanks for watching and good luck with your medals bye